Hey people, welcome back. Anjum here. Today I'm going to be reading the notebook, the notebook of the um, snap of the super group. Book 10. <sighs> Chapter 1. The Salamander Report. It was way past bedtime when Alexander put down his report. Petzl. He smiled at his drawing of a bug-eating, waltz-climbing, tug-flicking creature. Knock, knock. Alexander's dad stepped into the room. How's your homework going, going kiddo? He said. He asked. All done, said Alexander, holding up his report. I hope my teacher likes it. Salamander. Awesome amphibian. I love land. I love water. Helped out. Dam places, creeks, caves behind, beneath logs. Die. Worms, flies, grasshoppers, spiders. Superpowers. Clings to walls. Regro oh, regrows lost limbs. Catches food with a stretchy, stinky, sticky tongue. Myth. Thousands of years ago, people thought salamanders were fire monsters. Fun fact. Salamander is also my nickname. Dr. Tal is going to love it, says Dad. Now, get some sleep. Now, Glenner climbed into bed. Sleep tight, sleep tight, Al, he, he says, Dad. He turned out the light. Alexander thought about how much fun he'd had writing the, his salamander paper. He'd been writing similar, similar reports ever since moving to Stermont. But these other reports were not about animals. These were about monsters. Alexander pulled up a beat up, a beat up old notebook from the from beneath his pillow. Salamanders are not really fire monsters, he thought. Then he opened the notebook to read about a real fire monster, flame deer, dental woodland creature that breathes fire. Diet. Bert Martian loves overcooked popcorn, toasts the color of charcoal. Psst. Psst. At rainy days, um, a flame deer becomes a steam buck. Warning, don't touch the antlers. Yowch! Hapta, five miles south of North Dakota. Fun fact, flame deer hooves... Flame deer hooves shoot sparks when they scuff blacktop. Alexander closed the notebook. The flame deer must have burned those pages when it battled the old SSMP, he thought. SSMP stood for Mon's Super Secret Monster Patrol. The original SSMP had created the notebook to, pr to protect Sturmont from monsters. The Monster Patrol had now, had now had three members, Alexander and his two best friends, Super Secret Monster Patrol club, club members. Alexander, the leader, Nikki, brave and clever, Rip, short but sweet, crush, strong. And tomorrow, we might be adding a new member, Alexander thought. He smiled and drifted off to, off to sleep. Chapter 2. Going, going, goon. The next morning, Alexander was running late. He double-checked his backpack to make sure he had his two most important items. 1. The monster notebook. 2. His animal report. Then he hopped on his bike and rode to school. Alexander coasted over to a bike rack. He set his bike lock. 2.29. February 29. He thought, my birthday is easy to remember. Clickety click. Alexander scrambled all the numbers on his lock. Then he froze. Something wobbled around off to his left. Something green and wiggly. Alexander jumped. A snake? Swish. The green thing flopped behind a hedge. Snakes don't move like that, he thought. Maybe it's a monster. School was about to start. But Alexander knew that stopping a monster was more important and, than being on time to class. He, the green thing wriggled through, wriggled through the hedge. Alexander ran to the other side. His jaw dropped. The green thing wasn't a snake. It was an arm. The flippy, floppity arm of a balloon goon. Balloon goon. Wibbly, wobbly, air-sucking monster. 
The goon fixed its googly eyes on Alexander. Alexander had battled balloon goons before. In fact, there was the first monster he had run into when he moved to Stermont. I thought we popped all you goons, he said, pulling a sharp pencil from his backpack. We must have missed one. He bounced, the goon bounced around the corner of the school. Alexander ran after it. But there was no a monster behind the school. Just a huge garbage can, garbage dumpster. Clang, clong, something banged against the other side of the da- uh, dumpster. Alexander snuck over. He leapt out with a battle cry. He Scrish! Alexander's pencil tore out the sh- something and tore through something shiny and plastic. A garbage bag. An overstuffed garbage bag in the arms of a tall, white-haired man. Eep! The white-haired man flailed his arms, flinging garbage everywhere. Mr. Horsley! Mr. Horsley! shouted Alexander. Mr. Horsley, super, school secretary, janitor, janitor nor, nurse, bus driver, and gym teacher. Former SSMP member. Only grown-ups, only grown-up who can see monsters? Huge Freddy cat. I was just taking out the cr- trash, cried Mr. Horsley, pulling a banana peel off his shoulder. Why'd you attack me? Th- sorry, I thought you were a balloon goon, Alexander said. He looked around. Do you see one wobble this way? Mr. Horsley swallowed. What? No, no, no. I thought you guys destroyed every last of those horrible things. Yeah, said Alexander. I thought so, too. Bring. Mr. Horsley jumped again. The late bail, he said. I'll clean this up. You get to class. Chapter 3. Too late to class. Alexander sprinted up the escalators. He was out of breath by the time he reached the ninth floor. Alexander looked around. Students were talking, laughing, and running over all the place. You sure picked the right. You sure picked the right day to be late, Salamander! Someone shouted. There's no teacher. Alexander turned to see Rip holding a big yellow box that said, "Hands off!" Doctor Tallow is even later than you are said Nicky, rushing over. What kind of teacher? Guys! Alexander interrupted. He lowered his voice. I saw a balloon goon! Nicky's eyes widened. You did? Where? Behind the school. No way! Said Rip said. Did you pop it? Nicky asked. Well, no, said Alexander. I mean, I tried to. I ran after it. But it just vanished. I ended up slashing a garbage bag instead. I hate to, I hate to burst your bubble, Salamander," said Rip. "The balloon goons ju- can't just disappear. Maybe the garbage bag looked like a balloon goon," suggested Nicky. But Alexander began. "So, Salamander," said Rip. "Before you fought the garbage bag, did you finish your al, your your animal report? It's not as a- awesome as mine." Rip shook his yellow box. Yep, I finished it, said Alexander. It was fun. Well, for you, maybe, said Nicky. I had to write about crummy goldfish. Pfft, whatever, said Rip. You're just jealous because Dr. Tell likes me than, me more than you. Twenty, he pointed to the board. Twenty strikes and you're out, Nicky. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Rip. One cross. A door swung open. Doctor Tallow walked in. Sorry, I'm late. She said, and rubbing lotion on her hands. I left my lotion in the car. My skin dries up without it. The most students didn't hear her. They were still chatting loudly. Dr. Tao clapped her hands. Clap, 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 clap. The students echoed her mm, echoed her and mm, clapped back to her. That's better, said Dr. Tao. She turned to Mick, Nikki, smiling. Except for you. Your claps were a teensy bit late. Dr. Tao went to the board and added a 19th X between, beside Nikki's name. Nikki tugged on her hoodie strings until her uh, only her... 
until well, only her narrowed eyes were visible. Chapter four, stink sauce. Take your seats, dearies, said Dr. Chell. We'll begin our uh, annual reports. Alexander sat next to a girl in a bun shirt. Hi, Dottie. Hi, Dottie. Hi, Dottie, he said. Dottie had been around for a couple of monster battles, but she wasn't, but she wasn't a, a, mon, a member of a SSMP. At least, not yet. She gave Alexander a little wave. Dottie Rogers, Rogers, why don't you start us off? <laughs> and Dr. Tell, Do um, Dottie jumped up. Sure, but first I need to get something from the classroom pet zone, she said. Dr. Tell led Dottie to a door at the back of the room. She punched a few numbers into a keypad, and the door swung open. Doc Dottie stepped inside. Alexander knew this room well. It was lined with, ca in cage with cages that held every kind of classroom pet. Dr. Tell taught animal lessons in there. Dottie came out, cradling a white and brown rabbit. My report is about the cutest and flu cutest, fluffiest animals of all. Bunnies, she said. They're super neat, and I've got the numbers to prove it. Excellent work, Doc said Dr. Tell. Next up, Alexander Bob. Alexander gave his report. He could tell he was talking too fast, but everyone seemed interested, especially Dr. Tell. Terrific, Dr. Tell said. I didn't know salamanders could regrow lost lost legs. That could sure come in handy. After a few re or more reports, it was Rick's turn. Ladies, gentlemen, and weenies, he said to the class, prepare to be blown away by the Texas horned lizard. He drew a spiky creature on the board. This reptile... This rep dessert reptile can and puff itself up, puff itself up, itself up," said Rip. "But that's not the coolest part. Let's see a hungry bad bad guy animal. Oh. Let's see a hungry bad guy animal is prowling around. The Texas horned lizard can protect itself by shooting blood from its eyes." Students gasped. Yes, yes, amazing, Rip continued. But it gets better. The blood is mixed with stuff that is soup that makes and smell and taste and smell super gross. Let me show you. Let me. Rip tore open his big box. It's out with a strange hat and goggles set. How do you? Said Rip, strapping on the headgear. I am the Texas Horned Lizard. Some students sh lifted their seats. Uh-oh, Rip continued. Here comes a hungry coyote. Cowboy hat spy, its goggles, its squirt soaker. He pulled out a crude dog, le dog leg drawing and set it up on the bookcase. Sure, Mr. Coyote. I look like a tasty snack, said Rip. But how does this taste? Goose. He squeezed his, his squirt soaker, blasting the coyote with red, stinky, stinky liquid. The coyote drooped. Gross! Someone shouted, Ew, that smells terrible! Yep, said Rip, smiling. Ah, uh, that's, that's the idea. I made it myself. Rip stinks off its recipe. Beet juice, ketchup, cod liver oil, and vinegar. Stir until you almost poop. Students were gagging from the stench of Rip's stink sauce. Very creative, Rip, dear, said Dr. Tell. She was pinching her nose so hard that it looked sort of squished. Everyone head down to lunch while I open some windows. We will finish the reports tomorrow. Chapter 5. Little Squirt. How can we how can we eat when we're still gagging from rip stink sauce? So, so Alexander, you know, his class made it made its way from down down to the cafeteria. The sauce smelled pretty tasty to me, 
said Nikki. Rip Grant. I knew you'd say that, you crazy vampire. Nick, Nikki was secretly a monster, a good monster called a vampire. She can see. She could see in the dark, and she loved anything red and juicy. Think fast, Rip added. She he talks to Rip, it, Nikki a bag of his a bag of his leftover stink sauce. She smiled. Then she re read the lunch menu and smiled a little less. Alexander, Rip, and Nikki filled their trays. They joined Dottie at an empty table. Hi, guys, Dottie said. Rip, your squirty lizard goggles were awesome. Thanks, said Rip. I just I just can't believe Dr. Tell didn't give you an X for or stinky up the whole classroom, said Nikki. I got one for clapping wrong. You should try becoming a a perfect student, like me, said Rip. Nikki grumbled that she dumped the stink sauce all over a chili dog. Alexander cleared her throat. I guess you do keep getting in trouble, Nikki. He said, uh, uh, maybe Dr. Tell will go easier on me tomorrow, on you tomorrow, after she sees your annual report. Yeah, maybe, said Nikki. Hey, Nikki, what kind of cupcakes do you like? Daddy asked. I'm bringing some to school next week for my birthday. Alexander could tell Nikki, Dottie was trying to, to cheer Nikki up. It was sort of working. Strawberry, Nikki said with a tiny smile. Alexander took a bite of his warm dog, which, is, which was now a chili dog. He leaned over to grab a mustard bottle from the next table. He couldn't quite reach it. Crinkle, someone wearing strange, shiny clothes, handed the mustard bottle to Alexander. Thanks for... <gasps> Alexander gasped, almost choking on his chili dog. <clears throat> the tall, shiny figure at the next table wasn't a person at all. It was an angry monster covered in bubble wrap. All right, guys. I'm going to be. I'm going to be reading the ne the next chapters next time. I hope you like it. And bye bye. This is Angie signing off for next another chapter. Bye bye, weenies.